In this video, we're going to take a close look at code for non-void methods. What we're going to be doing is breaking down what this public static double total cost, this parameter, this return statement, we're going to talk about what each of those mean, breaking it down so you can understand it. So to do that, we need to first take a look at our program. We have a variable called cost, which is of data type uh, double. It's going to be 10.0, and that's just for a simple uh, thing. We're not taking user input. What we're doing is trying to understand what all this does. We also have another variable called final cost, which we've also set to double. That's because we don't know what the final cost is going to be. Then we have our final cost being set to, and then we have our method call total cost, which passes down cost. It does a calculation, returns it, stores it in final cost, System.out.println, it outputs the final cost. If you're new to Java, it can be very overwhelming uh, to know what's going on or to even know what this stuff down here means. So let's take a look at the output and then we'll walk through what each of these things mean. So let's go ahead, we're gonna compile our program. We're going to run our program. And when we run our program here, it comes out to 10.70 with a bunch of uh, zeros and then a one. So that is what the output should be. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna break it down so we can understand what is actually happening in this non-void method. Now that we've seen our code run, let's go ahead and break down what all these words inside of our total cost method actually means. So the first word that you're gonna see is public. And all that means is that the method can be accessed from any class. Here we're inside of our public class main. I can access this method from within the main class, but I can also access it from any class because it is a public method. That is all that public means. The next word you're gonna see is the word static. A static method does not involve instances of the class. Now, if you're new to Java, you may be saying, I don't know what that means. All that means is there's no object being used with this method. When you create an object and you're having an object call a method, it cannot be a static method. So that's all that static means. When you're not working with objects, you're gonna use a static method. Now we're on to the part of the, re the data type being returned by the method. This is what makes our method a non-void method, which means a calculation or value is being returned once the method runs the code. If you take a look at my main method, you'll notice we have public static void, which means it's not returning a value. Down here, I have public static double. But what does that double actually mean? The double corresponds to where my calculation that is being done where it's returning to. It's returning to final cost. I look up here, I see that I have uh, determined final cost should be a double. So I want my method to return a double, that way it can go inside the final cost variable. If I made this a Boolean value or a string, I could not store it in final cost because final cost is a double. So wherever you're storing your return, uh, calculation or whatever you're returning, wherever you're returning it to, make sure that those data types match up. So the calculation here is gonna return the final cost. That is a double, which is why I have made this a double. After you have that, you have the method name. Total cost is the name of our non-void method. We have a return type, double, and we have our method name, total cost. When I create my method, I also need what's called a parameter. We're creating a parameter with a data type and name. Here I have the data type double with my variable name AMT. Now the reason I don't need to assign it a value like I do up here is because it's being set a value. It will accept the value from the main method when total cost is called. Here we can see total cost is being called. The value inside of cost is being copied to our parameter AMT, which is why I do not need to assign it a value. Whatever cost is, which in this case is 10.0, that is going to be copied down to AMT. Notice my data type of AMT matches the data type of what is being copied. So cost is a double. I wanna make sure that matches the data type of the parameter that's going to accept the copy of cost. Then we have the return statement. The calculation is returned back to the call 
of the total cost method. Right here, total cost, open parentheses, cost, close parentheses, that is where I'm calling this method. I simply type in the name and then I'm calling the method. The result of this calculation, AMT times 1.07, that's gonna be stored inside final cost because here I have final cost set to equal total cost, which is when I call my method, I pass down cost, which is 10.0, that goes into amount, I'm doing 10.0 times 1.07, and that's being returned back to final cost, and it's gonna be stored in final cost. Now what happens if I have more than one value I need to pass? Maybe you have an assignment where you have to pass more than one value. Not a problem. So here we've updated our code and what I've done is I went ahead and changed the double cost to an int so you can see a different data type. I have my double tax rate, 1.1 final cost. I don't know what that's gonna be, so I have that set to 0, 0.0. So here we have final cost and then total cost. That is the name of my method. And what I am doing is I'm taking a look at cost and tax rate. So let's take a look at cost. Cost is being put into AMT. I have INT, which matches the data type of cost that I'm passing down. If I made this a double, it would not work. So I need to make sure that the data types match. Here, T rate is going to be representative of tax rate. That is a double, so I made a double T rate. But whatever is in tax rate, which in this case is 1.1, is gonna be copied into T rate. I'm gonna take my amount, I'm gonna multiply it by T rate, and that's gonna go back and return into final cost, and then we can output our final cost. Hope you found this video helpful. If you did, make sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to help our channel grow. We'll see you guys in the next video.